At Windsor Castle, preparations were building up. The military carrying out final rehearsals for the funeral that will take place entirely behind castle walls. 30 people will make up the congregation with the Duke's children and grandchildren represented in the procession to the chapel led by the Prince of Wales and Princess Anne. The Queen will be accompanied by a lady-in-waiting as she's driven behind the coffin. Members of the family will not wear military uniform and the congregation will be socially distanced, will wear face masks and won't sing. The irony of COVID is that the Duke of Edinburgh, who never liked all the panoply and state, wanted no dramas about his dying. And this is the event that perhaps he would have most required. It is measured, it is tidy, it is disciplined, and it's the best salute the armed forces could give. This will no doubt be the focal point, the unique mode of transport chosen by the Duke to carry his coffin, a Land Rover he helped to design. In a more traditional touch, his insignia, carefully sewn onto cushions, will be displayed inside the chapel, representing the honours he received throughout his lifetime. They represent uh, British and Commonwealth um, orders and decorations, and uh, the final cushion with orders from uh, Greece and Denmark for obvious reasons. There are, the, the Duke of Edinburgh had, I think, 61 decorations and awards from 53 different other countries, and there simply just wasn't the space to have them all on display. This weekend, the world will be watching the royal family, and ultimately, it was the Queen who decided that they won't be wearing military uniform. The reason to try and keep the attention on the Duke of Edinburgh and away from problems they've had recently within the family and those who've stepped down from royal duties. Inevitably, there will be interest in Prince William and Prince Harry, back together to mourn their grandfather, walking in the same line behind his coffin, but separated by their cousin, Peter Phillips. In the privacy of Marlborough House in central London, where bouquets left at Buckingham Palace have been moved, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall looked at the flowers and other fitting tributes left for his father. The Prince later spotted arriving at Windsor to support the Queen, as the Duke would have expected. She's supported very ably by the Prince of Wales, who will continue to do that in that role. I think he will carry on um, really as the main supporter to the Queen, but the wider family will do that too. But the Prince of Wales, I think, um, possibly will take on, if you like, a more of a quasi-king role, whereby he will carry on like, international trips and, and things like that, representing the Queen. <laughs> On Saturday, it will become clear just how much Prince Philip was involved in the planning. From the music to military ceremony, making his mark until the very end. And for complete live coverage of Prince Philip's funeral service, tune in to Sky News this Saturday from 11pm Eastern Standard Time or our replay 6 o'clock Sunday morning.